Dennis, welcome. We, we must make you our world global affairs correspondent. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, let's, well, uh, so if much, we George. can, talk uh, uh, about your one of your countries, Australia. Uh, I was in China uh, for a week, just back, uh, and uh, there's a lot of talk uh, in China about the sheer illogicality, isn't the word, uh, unhinged Australian obsession against China. When China is Australia's biggest trading partner, has never lifted a finger against Australia, has no bad intentions whatsoever towards Australia. Why are your countrymen so hot under the collar uh, about a country that they actually should be cozying up to and getting along well with? Well, George, I believe that uh, uh, one one, one very uh, say, particular explanation for this is the fact that Australia has blindly followed in the footsteps of the United States in almost every, every single military and diplomatic aggression against other countries in the world since the times of the, of the Korean War. Uh, the Australian uh, troops have uh, have been involved in virtually every single conflict that uh, that the United States has ever been uh, involved in or military militarily intervened uh, in Korean War, Vietnam Vietnam War, Iraq War, the war in, the war in Afghanistan, and uh, other uh, smaller military conflicts. Uh, one particular explanation uh, for this is is I'd say the overwhelming do dominance of the American capital. Uh, here in uh, here in Australia, and it has become uh, such a uh, such a such a, such a strong component of the Australian uh, foreign policy that it has virtually become uh, unquestionable uh, by uh, e either one of the, e either of the two uh, major political parties uh, here here in, here in Australia. With regards to this uh, latest uh, deal, which is which is part of the um, uh, the Australia, U.S., and uh, U.K. alliance, or AUKUS, uh, the purchase uh, and the purchase of the nuclear submarines uh, by the uh, by the Australian uh, government, supposedly to deter Chinese uh, military aggression. Imagine uh, uh, whatever, whatever whatever may whatever that may uh, be. Uh, whatever, <laughs> as as as, the, as as you said, uh, George. Uh, uh, China has not invaded or militarily occupied any country in the uh, in, in the Southeast Asia. Despite this, despite this, uh, the Australian government is still keen on uh, the purchase on the purchase of these submarines, valued at approximately th approximately three hundred and sixty billion dollars as part of the AUKUS oh. uh, alliance. And as, as as you also mentioned, this this puts Australia in a paradoxical position, whereby whereby it is it, it is effectively uh, is effectively fulfilling the interests of of the U.S. capital in its battle in, in its own battle against uh, the rising Chinese hegemony uh, across uh, across Asia. It's. Uh, it is it, it is it is truly it is truly uh, paradoxical, but uh, we have but 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 we have to remember that Australia uh, was always uh, in the vanguard of U.S. imperialism across the world and continues to be so. Uh, in the, except that in the case of of, a poten of any potential conflict uh, with China, I believe it would it would actually be Australia. Uh, that that would suffer. That would suffer. Would be the country that would suffer the most among any of the other Western uh, countries. Now that's a lot of Australian dollars to hand over to the British and American arms manufacturers. Three hundred and sixty billion dollars. Uh, do the Australian people have no other need for that money? Is everything hunky dory down under? Well, George, uh, according to uh, the uh, to, to, to major to the two uh, major political parties of, of Australia, that is the Liberal Party and the, and the Labour Party, it certainly it certainly seems that uh, Australia has 
has this cash to spare. Uh, unfortunately, hopefully, hopefully there are still, you know, there are still some uh, some uh, you know voices, political political voices in the parliament uh, that uh, you know that actually they actually show they actually show the uh, uh, that that is that is not the case. Uh, one of the in one of the uh, latest um, uh, Q and A uh, shows here, here in Australia, uh, Senate, Senator uh, uh, Jordan. Uh, Jordan Steele, who is a senator for the Greens Party, uh, actually actually pointed out uh, was well, so first of all the absurdity of the three hundred sixty billion dollars worth of a deal, but also of the of the needs of the desperate of the desperate need uh, to fund uh, the uh, the various you know social services uh, in in Australia, the disability services, the the uh, the health services, really the need. Uh, for uh, for in, for investment in the in the infra- in the infrastructure uh, in Aust- in Australia, something that uh, something it's uh, also uh, I must also say uh, that Australia has always has also been uh, very pretty much prevented from accessing the funds of the Belt and Road Initiative uh, by the United States. So the Belt and Road Initiative of China, which could uh, eno- help Australia enormously. Uh, has also been uh, denied to it uh, by uh, by the United States. There's there's have also been the words of the former Prime Minister Paul Keating, who uh, who also who also point, pointed out that uh, China does not represent a military threat to Australia. Um, so the uh, so in in effect in, in essence, uh, this is you know this deal this deal is all about. Uh, the, this, this deal is all about, you know, uh, the United States and and the United Kingdom, you know, pushing uh, pushing Australia right, uh, you know, right right onto the edge, right in right in right in, in the vanguard of any of any military uh, conflict uh, with China. If yeah, well, if, uh, if of course mil- they're they're trying to push you, uh, they're trying to push you into alliance with uh, one of the uh, middle distance neighbors. Japan, which actually did bomb and would have, if it could, have invaded Australia in uh, World War II. And uh, there are some people still alive uh, who were bombed in Darwin by the Japanese Air Force. Now they want you to link up with Japan and, uh, and fight China, which was similarly invaded and, of course, it's people massacred by that very same Japan. It's a very ugly alliance, isn't it? It is indeed, especially considering uh, the uh, evolution of uh, of the of the Japanese, uh, say, foreign policy, and particularly its policy towards uh, militarization, or should I say, re-militarization, and uh, once again. Uh, allowing allowing for uh, say the use of the use of the, of the military for uh, not just not just for self defense purposes something that was previously defined in the constitution in the post war uh, constitution of of Japan there uh, with regards to the Australia the Australian Japanese military cooperation uh, against uh, China I believe this is also this really is also a, a, a symptom of the um, of the of the uh, uh, of the paradox that Australia finds us, finds itself in uh, of effect of Australia being of being forced to go against its uh, commercial and economic uh, economic interests uh, with with its many years of uh, of, uh, of trade deals uh, with China Australia Australia effectively being being forced uh, into uh, cooperation military military cooperation. Uh, with a, with a nation that you said previously invaded them, and Australia effectively being being forced to do the dirty work of the uh, <clears throat> uh, of the Western of the Western imperialist uh, nations, namely the United States and the uh, and the United and the United Kingdom. What what I feel like what what we're really seeing here is the loss of the Australian sovereignty. Uh, there is the ability of Australia to do you know implement its own sovereign. Uh, decisions uh, with regards to uh, with, reg- uh, you know, with, with, with regards with regards to the economy, with regards to uh, 
uh, any of the uh, you know, any potential alliances that could greatly uh, benefit it. I personally believe that uh, Australia would uh, greatly benefit uh, from from being a member of BRICS, from being an associate member of the African uh, Union, from being an associate member or an observer or an observer member of the Community of Latin American uh, Nations, and strengthening really strengthening its position among the non-aligned world, non-aligned world. Uh, and, and when you look at the numbers, uh, the trade uh, the, the numbers, commercial numbers, uh, and trading uh, of Australia with the, with, the, with the rest of the world, you can clearly see it, uh, you know, drawing closer and closer uh, to the major powers like China, like India, and before the uh, before, before the conflict in Ukraine, also uh, with uh, also with Russia. So. Uh, there what's is, their, there is what's their take potential. on uh, yeah what, what what's their take just finally Dennis what's their take on the Russia Ukraine uh, conflict they're obviously being encouraged to preoccupy themselves with uh, preparing for war with China as I have seen in headlines in <clears throat> the Australian media absurd though it sounds this Lilliputian they'll not even have these submarines until you're a very old man although you'll be paying for them uh, throughout your working life. Uh, the, the Lilliputian is being pointed at China, but are they equally hawkish against Russia? Australia has, has certainly joined in with this, uh, with, with, with what I would say, the, uh, uh, the anti-Russia coalition, along with uh, practically, practically all the rest of the uh, Western world. Uh, Australia has also uh, has also sent uh, 500 million dollars worth of uh, lethal aid uh, to Ukraine, and with you know with weapon with weapons and um, uh, weapons ammunition and uh, other other items, including the Bushmaker uh, armored armored personnel carriers uh, that have, that were previously del delivered uh, to Ukraine. Yeah, Australia has also agreed to uh, uh, to begin training of the uh, of the Ukrainian uh, troops in what well, say both both in Australia and there are also there are also Australian military advisors uh, which are sta which are stationed uh, in U in Ukraine. So I'd say once again, once again, Aus uh, Australia uh, you know sort of sleep sleepwalking into uh, another conflict uh, in the world in a, another conflict in which Australian sovereignty and the Australian independence were never uh, were never under threat where the where the, uh, the the Australia's you know economic interests were never under threat and yet it's you know the will of the Australian government uh, was such that uh, there was, was such that they believe that you know the alliance uh, with the United States is definitely is it is worth uh, much uh, much more uh, than uh, any potential for the well, Australian. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Dennis. Uh, we've we've lo we've run out of time, but I'll tell you what. Given how much they are doing for the British and the American arms industry and the geopolitical stances of the United States and the UK, you'd think that they'd be able at least to get your compatriot. Julian Assange sprung from a British dungeon and sent home to see his family there. Dennis, thank you very much indeed for thank joining you, us on the mother of all talk shows.